I'm talking about straining for that logo on the side of your helmet and not the name on your back. Yes, sir. Because we know what it represents. It represents everybody here you see and everybody you can't that we've talked about. I'm here to strain with you, man. I swear to God I'm here to strain with you. Let's go. Everything you got, strain with everything you got. Let's go. Let's go. Bills on three. One, two, three. Bills. You're listening to the Off Tackle with John Fita Show with your host, Joe Miller. Except surprise, it is not your host, Joe Miller. It's your boy, Jay Spence, the King, and I'm here with my man, Papa Ron, and we are filling in for the big guy. We are filling in for my man, John Fina and, and uh, Joe Miller. Joe is busy. He's busy all season. He's been doing a ton of stuff. <laughs> and the big guy, John Fina, he's been a little busy, too. Uh, we'll have Big Newt from uh, Buffalo Rumlins joining us here in a moment as well. It's going to be a good night. We're go- It's Victory Monday. And that's how we're going to start it. When it's Victory Monday, I know that it's been a minute since the game has been on. It's been Thursday, so we had a had a full weekend, but it is Victory Monday. What's up, Papa Ron? How you feeling, man? Uh, a little under the weather today, but I'm I'm good. I'm waist down. I'm still in work attire. Waist up. We're ready to rock. <laughs> Go Bills. Waist up. It's time to work. Waist down. I feel you, man. So, uh, well, <laughs> so what we're going to do, we're going to keep the same – uh, format that John and Joe uh, typically do. And so we're going to talk about everything from the good, the bad to the ugly. We're going to talk about the entire game, what you felt like was good. So in the comments, jump in and let us know what you felt like was good. Let us know what was bad and let us know what was downright ugly. And then we're going to actually, you know, let's start here. Let's start here. Let's talk about today. I feel like there's some news that might not get most people excited, but I feel like there's a good portion of Bill's Mafia that listens to Buffalo rumblings and cover one and WGR and all that stuff when there's no football to be had. (laughs) So for people like us, we like this stuff. Buffalo bills today signed Leonard Fournette running back Leonard Fournette to their practice squad. Is this a big deal for you or is this something that barely moves the needle? Uh, I don't think it moves the needle quite honestly, but I kind of look at it this way. If God forbid something happens to James Cook, who would you rather have leading the, the backfield? Uh, the 33-year-old Murray or 28-year-old Leonard Fournette. <clears throat> For me, I got to go Fournette. So I think in that regards, it's a good deal. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully nothing happens and it's, you know, status quo going forward. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I guess I'm with you there where I don't feel like it's going to, like, move the needle too big. But I'm a little confused. Let me get your opinion on this because everybody, like, everything that I'm looking at, it seems like people aren't too thrilled that we signed them. But to me, it's like, I get that Latavius Murray is on the roster already, but you do know he's older. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's like we do understand that Leonard Fournette isn't old and washed. I, I don't understand why people have that, um, I guess, that assumption about him. He's 29 years old. Last year, statistically, he had one of his best years. So, and that includes, I believe, I, I saw somewhere he had over 520 yards receiving. And he had, you know, so it was a decent year for him. For you, when you look at Leonard Fournette and when you look at it, what do you, Sarah in the comments says, this is a practice squad signing. He's going to be on the active roster. Like a couple of weeks ago, everybody kept telling me that, um, that Josh Norman was just a practice squad signing. And guess what? He was on the active roster last Thursday. So I hear you, yeah. Sarah, but I'm telling you, this isn't, this isn't a signing just for the practice squad. He's going to be active. But so as far as his abilities, um, do you feel that you would rather see Latavius Murray? Um, or was there somebody else out there that you would have rather brought in to, you know, replace the production of Damian Harris. And there wasn't much production to replace, quite honestly. Um, so I, I like the, the signing. I really do. I, I like Fournette. I think he had something like 73 receptions uh, last season. So he's effective in the in the run game – or, sorry, the pass game. Um, <clears throat> there was a, a comment in here, too, about James Cook. I don't think it's going to change anything as far as James Cook's carries or his touches in general. I, I think it's just, just – more than anything depth we'll probably see him in some short yardage situations maybe some goal line type of stuff Uh, him and murray uh will probably kind of share that load but um when it comes right down to it i think i'd rather see fernand on the field than murray 
I'm with you. You know, and, and the reason being is so as of right now in the red zone, I think like from goal goal line to goal situations, Murray is 0 4. Um, as far as punching it into the red zone, I think Leonard Fournette has shown obviously he was he was teamed up with Tom Brady, so it was a little bit different of it, uh, of a situation, but he showed that he could do exactly what he needed to do and um he scored touchdowns. That's why they call him touchdown Lenny, you know, and in, in the playoffs, he's playoff Lenny. So for me, yeah, I'm okay yeah. with signing a, a guy that has a knack for finding the end zone. And I, I feel like, you know, when you're looking at some of these comments here and, and, you know, most people, I think feel the same way, maybe besides Sarah, she's, she's, she still <laughs> seems like she's like not too. Um, and, and that's okay. If you're not too heavy on this signing, that's perfectly fine. Let us know in the comments why, because there's one side of it, Ron, I feel that, if if Fournette if Fournette is the guy that we saw with the Buccaneers, I'm happy with that. Like I'm I'm actually happy with that because I feel like he was their lead back. So right now we're not mm -hmm. taking snaps away from James Cook. James Cook is our number one back. It's going right. to be that for the rest of the season. But if you have a guy that can be that, um, you know, I'm okay with that. I agree. I think part of the problem might be, too, that there's a lot of Bills Mafia out there that's hoping for a big splash deal, and then we get Fournette. So I think there was a little bit of a letdown there. More to come. The trade deadline is still tomorrow, so we'll see what happens with that. But I think that might have been part of the, the, the deal, too. Well, and then there's been some rumblings, no pun intended. There's some rumblings about <laughs> another signing of a former Tampa Bay Buccaneer. And Dominican Sue is a name that's being thrown out. And it's not, I, I'll be honest with you. I know some people don't like to give too much credit to people who like just tweet things out and they're not like an insider or anything. I'm telling you, I've, there's some rumblings. It's not just a tweet that's going around. It's real rumblings about real conversations happening between Dominican Sue and the Buffalo Bills. How would you feel about that type of situation if Dominican Sue was to sign with the Bills? That's a tough one, honestly. I because I thought about this one myself, and I'm I don't know. I'm not sure. As you know, there's kind of this narrative about the type of player that Indomitian Sue is. Is he that guy? I I, I don't think so. Is he somebody that could? I, he's not going to fill Daquan Jones' shoes, but I do think he could be a powerful space eater. You know, taking on those double teams there, and maybe occasionally making some plays too. The biggest thing for me on the middle of that defensive line is I want to see. And they don't necessarily have to make get penetration because I feel like our edge guys can make the plays if those guys in the middle can occupy the blocks. Same thing with the linebackers, whether it's Dorian Williams, whether it's Dotson, whoever it's going to be over the offside or off uh, off the ball, or you know what I'm saying, the outside linebacker. <laughs> if that those front two guys can occupy those blocks and keep the offensive line off the linebackers, it makes everybody's job easier. It makes it easier in the back end with the secondary, which is another uh, issue as far as depth goes. So I, I think I would like the signing of Andamakan Sue. Um, we'll have to see him on the field to see if he's still got anything left. But I think the, just the raw power, I think, is probably still there. Yeah, and and to me, it, if if he can be anything close to um, first, let me let me rewind. Let me say this. I said this um, a few minutes ago. I was on uh, a different show for uh, Trainwreck, and I was saying first, let me let me say that Daquan Jones was playing like an all pro level talent. I just want everybody to understand whether we see it yeah. or not as Bills fans, if we want to acknowledge it or not, let me just tell you, Daquan Jones was playing at an all pro level. So whoever we get right now, unless we are trading away three first rounders for Aaron Jones, I mean, for Aaron Donald, or unless we're, you know, like <laughs> unless you're doing something crazy, you're not going to get similar production from, anybody as to what you were getting from Daquan Jones. So with that being said, if we can just have better production from what we've seen from Jordan Phillips, Tim Settle, um, I, I like those guys, but I don't think that they're, they're maintaining the level of play that we've seen since the beginning of the season before Daquan's injury. So um, I see in the comments, some people are saying like, isn't Sue like 36, 37 years old? He can't have much left. Um, I don't know how old he is. I think he's 35, 36, he's, but what I'm telling 36. you, okay, so he's 36. I'm going to tell you what he's 36, a defensive tackle. I'm not, I'm not looking for, I don't care if he's 
at the, again, at this point of the year, you're signing somebody or trading for somebody. You're not going to get a first round talent that's 27 years old, still in their rookie deal. You're not trading for Ed Oliver right now from another team. It's not happening. So I think this is pretty much the best you're going to get. And he's not bad. At 36, he's still powerful, like you said. He still can make some things happen. Give me Indominus Suit. Give me Indominus Suit. But there's another rumor yeah. going around about Jalen Johnson, a cornerback from the, the Chicago Bears. Uh, that's been a hot topic for a couple of teams, but Buffalo popped up today. How would you feel about that? I, I, right now, <laughs> the way that our defensive guys are dropping, I'll take anybody's back there. Uh, the corner is a concern because there's no depth. I mean, I think – if you told me we could go through this whole season with Benford and Shane Jackson and they would not get injured and everything's fine, okay, <clears throat> I'm okay with that. Um, is Dane Jackson this great all-world talent? No, he's not, but he he knows the defense. The, the uh, coaching staff trusts him. For the most part, he does a pretty good job. But I think that's a lot to ask. We still got nine games to go plus the playoffs, um, and I don't know what's going on with Kyrie Elam. So depth is a concern there. So I would definitely, you know, welcome a corner. For me, it's it's either defensive tackle or corner. If if there's a trade to be made, uh, that's where mm -hmm. it's got to be. But let, let me ask you, because you, you said that it's not going to happen for a first-round type of talent. Would you be okay if Bean throws out some first – if he does the whole F them picks mentality and he brings in a Darnold or, or somebody of that caliber <laughs> – where where are you with that? Because a lot of people are like, no, don't throw away our draft picks. And others are like, yeah, let's go for it now. <laughs> no, if you asking me, I'm going to say right now, I can't <laughs> say it on the show the way I would say it. You ever see the Michael Jordan meme when he be talking about the kids? And he'd be like, man, F them kids. That's how I feel about them picks. <laughs> F them picks. Because look, I get it. I get it. I get it. You draft. The way you maintain a good roster is that you 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 draft well. You You develop those guys. So I get it. That's how you maintain your roster. And that's how you kind of get around paying your quarterback a quarter of a billion dollars. Right. So I get that. But I also understand that Stefan Diggs is inching up in age. I also understand that we have an mm -hmm. old defensive line and defensive secondary. I also understand mm -hmm. that there's there's several factors that lead me to believe like, yo, I want my dogs to get one. I want Shout out to my guy, Jordan. I want Jordan Poyer to win. I want Micah Hyde to win a championship. I want Vaughn already has a couple, but I want him to get one in, in red, white, and blue. You know, so for me, whatever I got to do to to get the talent to come in right now and complete this thing, that's what I want to happen. That's exactly what I want to happen. See, your, your reasoning as far as the age of the team, that's kind of – that can be only in the other direction too, because of the age of the team, we need those picks to begin to replenish those spots. I, I there's, I mean, there's pros and cons either way. If you ask me, I, I'm going to like straddle the fence because <laughs> I don't know. I've always said that I don't want to go through another 17 year drought. I would rather have a chance at a Super Bowl every single year, even if it means not getting one, as opposed to go through 17 years of misery again. I don't want to do that again. But I do yeah. know that if, some big splash move was made with draft picks and we got a Super Bowl. I'm not going to care. I'm going to be super excited like the rest of those mafias. So I, I, I'm kind of either direction. I'm good with whatever the team decides to do. Ultimately, I think. When I think that's where I was going with it, where it's like, look, F them picks talking about the future. I get it. You want rookies in, in the next few years. But if I get one Super Bowl now, granted, I'm going to complain in two years when we're one and nine. <laughs> I get it. I'm going to complain. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to be on Twitter, Twitter fingers going. I'm going to be Meek <laughs> Mill out here. You know what I mean? Just yeah. going. I'm going to be out here. But if I get a Super Bowl out of it, yo, I, <laughs> I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't care. Um, real quick. You can bury uh, me in that Super Bowl shirt. <laughs> just, give me, just give me whatever the shirt is. As soon as they release it, I'm buying it. Yeah. And then the, the day that I die, bury me in that shirt. I want, I want it on yeah. my tombstone. He was happy as of February, whatever, 2000. <laughs> Just put it on the tombstone. He was happy as of this day. There you go. Love it. So before we get into the, the uh, second half of the show, like the segment where we talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly, um, I, there is one thing I do want to say about the game. I just, I just got to say, we did not let Baker Mayfield beat us. And I'm thrilled <laughs> about it. <laughs> I am thrilled about that. Do you know how embarrassing <laughs> it would have been? 
if if Baker Mayfield would have been like for me, it would have been bad. I've been dogging Baker for for years, man, for years. I I don't no, know if I'm everybody remembers. Go ahead. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie. When that draft was coming up with Mayfield, I was hoping Buffalo would get him. I I liked him in college. I thought the swagger was there. A little overboard sometimes, but I thought that's what Buffalo needs. Fortunately, <laughs> we got the right guy and it worked out. But uh, yeah, ever since then, I've been proven wrong consistently. <laughs> well, no, you know, I think a lot of people would have taken Baker number one overall, and and it makes sense back then. Like in that time, when you add context to it, it makes sense. For me, I think I was I was more on the bandwagon of Lamar Jackson because so we just had Tyrod, right? And he was somewhat mm-hmm. of a mobile quarterback. And so in my mind, I'm like, yo, you can plug and play, bring Tyrod right in. I mean, you know, he can go right into Tyrod's position, get some better receivers around him, and, and we can we can see what happened at Louisville. Thank God both of us were wrong. We got Josh Allen, and it turns out that he is the best quarterback in Buffalo Bills history. Some people gonna argue with me about that argue with yourselves i don't feel like doing it let's let's get to get that from me i'm just saying a lot of people argue with me about that and i I I love jim like the rest of them but are you kidding me i'm gonna ask big newt about that so so before we get into the good bad and the ugly i'm gonna ask big newt about that i want to i want big newt's opinion on that who's the best quarterback in bill's history if it's not like is it still jim kelly is it still or has josh done enough so far because Jim ain't won the Super Bowl either. He got us there four times, <laughs> but but he ain't won one either. Yeah. So we're going to talk to Big Newt about that, and then we're going to get into the good, the bad, and the ugly about last Thursday's game. And then we'll give you a quick preview on this Sunday night. Big, big game. Real big game. Imagine waking up to a world that's as clear as your dreams. With Zeiss Smile technology, this is your reality. At Fichte, Endel, and Elmer Eye Care, our mission is your vision. Conducted by a team of expert surgeons, leveraging leading edge technology, our procedure is safeguarded, swift, and tailored to your eye care needs. Say goodbye to the limits of glasses or contacts. Embrace a world where your vision keeps pace with your life's aspirations. Contact us today at 800-309-2020 or visit us online at ficta.com. At Ficta Endel and Elmer Eye Care, we are focused on you. What's up, Big New? How's it going, man? Hey, man. Thanks for having me, bro. Hey, I just got a question, man. Do you watch wrestling or did you grow up watching wrestling? I grew up watching it, yeah. Okay. Dude, when y'all had me backstage waiting to get on, it was like, (laughs) You know the tag teams and the dude get whooped, but the other dude want to get in. Like, tag me in, tag me in. That's how I was, man. I was chopping at go. the bit. I was chopping <laughs> at the bit. I'm like, dude, y'all got to get me on her because I'm echoing everything Spence the King is saying, bro. And I'm older than both of y'all, I'm sure. I'm 50. So I only got so many years with my cholesterol. So I'm like, dude, <laughs> I'll give Trey any draft pick. And it's funny because uh, Sal uh, Capaccio was talking about on the Extra Point show yesterday, he was saying how the Rams sacrificed their future to get that Mm -hmm. uh, Super Bowl a few years ago. And I'm like, man, I was just listening to that yesterday. I'm like, dude, sign me up. I don't care. We got to trade 10 first round picks. I don't care about the future. If you said we could get a Super Bowl this year, I would mortgage the future because I don't know how many more I got, man. So... Yes, I'm, I'm with Spence the King, and I would wear that 2023-2024 Super Bowl T-shirt for the rest of my days. And like he said, bury me in that shirt. I can care less. <laughs> now, I'm saying that right now. I'm sure come two, three years from now, I'll be like, come on, y'all. Let's give another one. But, yeah, I yeah. just want one before I die. Yeah, you're not that much older than me. I'm 47, so we're, oh, okay. we're pretty close. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I would mortgage yeah. the future to get a Super Bowl. And then, like uh, Spencer said, before he signed off and went to the commercial, I do agree Josh Allen already is the best quarterback in Buffalo Bills history. And I grew up thinking that it was Jim Kelly. And so some of my friends who are Do- uh, Dolphins fans, they was like, dude, Jim Kelly really wasn't that good. And you go back and look at where he is on all-time uh, all stats leaders, 
and he wasn't. And I'm like, man, Josh Allen is going to break all those records that he got. So I would say yeah. that Josh Allen is our all time. Jim Kelly holds a, a bigger space in my heart right now, but Josh Allen is going to break all those records. He's going to break all the records for sure. Um, I know that the accolades are, aren't quite there yet as far as – well, I, thinking about it, I don't think Jim Kelly has any MVPs um, either. Um, yeah, I, I'm with you, and I've even gone as far even currently. There's no quarterback more physically gifted than than Josh Allen. Um, right. and, and I know a lot of people are going to come at me because of Patrick Mahomes, and Patrick Mahomes is great, but I just don't think that they're, the total package – there's anybody that can compete with him. It's just a matter of whether or not Allen can bring it all to fruition at once and for a prolonged season and not throw three picks against the Jets defense. But that is physically true. gifted, that is true. there's no one better. I agree. I agree. And but one thing about Patrick Mahomes is he has he has one of the best coaches all time in his corner, too. So a lot of that has a lot to do with it too. So yeah, and that's something that I think you have to throw back to is say you know, swap the positions. If if Allen was in KC and vice versa, right. would we tell you talking a different story? Would it be Allen with the two Super Bowls? I, right. I think so personally, but yeah, yeah, I agree. I yeah. agree. So we're gonna get into the the good, bad, and the ugly first of all from last week's game. Um, I know as Spence said earlier, it was a few days ago, and, and on my show, the Mafia Cast, we've kind of already touched on the game a little bit. But uh, I'll start with – let's just start with the good And on this game. I did listen to your show, the last couple of shows. <laughs> I have to say you and Jamie did not seem very confident in, in the, this Tampa game, uh, Tampa Bay game. No, we didn't, to tell you the truth. I, I believe at the beginning of the season we both had uh, we both had them winning in our projections. But uh, the way we've been playing – and it isn't just Josh Allen, you know. It's how the offensive coordinator – is calling, but he turned all that around, and I'm sure both of us will have that in the good section. The way we started off, no huddle, fast, we yeah. were spreading the ball all the way around. That's Buffalo Bills football. That's Josh Allen football, and so it's funny because it's kind of like I feel like I feel like the front office and the coaching staff was listening to what we were saying because it was like, dude, what are y'all doing? Why are we huddling? Um, Go ahead, go fast, up tempo. Let Josh Allen run the ball. He probably had his uh, the highest rushing output of the season this past week. You got to let him play football. And so yeah. I thought we saw that, especially in the first half. Yeah, especially in that first half. It's funny you say that because um, on, I think it was last Monday after that New England game, I wrote an article and basically my five my five things to get the offense back to elite status. No huddle was one of them. Get Shakir in the slot and keep him there and run the offense for Diggs and Kincaid. And I felt like Dorsey read my article and was like, yeah, this guy knows he's talking about. Let's do it. <laughs> or at least that's how you feel. That's how you feel yeah. about it, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, but, yeah, I'm with you. This speeding up the offense with the up-tempo, no huddle, whatever you want to call it. Um, I, I don't remember necessarily in the second half if they continued with that throughout. But no. But I want to see that no. throughout the whole game. Like, not every single drive, but, you know, every few drives here and there, bring it out and let them run that race down the field. Yeah, I, I feel like McDermott gets complacent. Uh, he gets conservative. It's kind of like, all right, don't mess this up. Our defense can win the game. And that's probably what you got in the bad part, that we were – we were uh, Godwin – looking up two seconds before from losing that game because the ball yeah. fell on a Hail Mary. A ball should never fall. And it's funny. If you go back and look at that, it's like our guys was dragging guys to the ground. Our guys was on the ground. It was all there for them to hit that uh, Hail Mary again like the Cardinals did to us uh, with oh, D-Hop a few years ago. So I don't like that we were successful today, especially with a defensive-minded head coach. But, hey, a win is a win. But it's funny, man. If we would have lost that game, man, I, I don't know what we would have done. Yeah, we lost our minds for sure. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it seems like, though, every every year now, <clears throat> the Bills seem to do this. They come out of the gate and they just light up teams. There was a three-week stretch this year. They put up 123 points, three wins by 28-plus. And then they just <laughs> like fall off right. the cliff. They've done it in past uh, past years as well. I think there was what two years ago when they lost the back to back games and just got destroyed by Tennessee. 
and I don't remember who the other team was, but I don't know why this happens. Um, but for me, yeah, the good, it's simple, no huddle. I love seeing King K getting, uh, get, starting to get rolling. And um, I, I love Dawson Knox, <laughs> but it is King K time. And I heard you say that last week too. It is King K time. Yeah, yeah. It, and the way it's set up, and I love Dawson Knox, man, but the amount of money he makes and what he brings to the team, man, King K runs circles around him. And it's like, and I and I say it on my show all the time in college. I play my senior year at tight end, and the things that he does when he catches the ball, the way he high points the ball with his hands, it never gets into his body. He can catch the ball, turn up field, and he's always falling forward. Like all those, like yeah. when you're coming out of college, that's what scouts look at. It's like the little minuscule thing. Can you, do the ball get into your body? Do you catch everything with your hands? Can you turn up here and are you going forward when you fall? Those are all check marks of why he was a first round pick. And if we wouldn't have got him, somebody would have got him. Probably Dallas, right? Yeah. So Dawson Knox, he doesn't do those things, right? And so him getting hurt, and, and this is a competitive league, man. You get hurt, you out four games, it might be a wrap for you. You know, and I and I and yeah. I think this is his time. And you saw it on Sunday. I mean, I'm sorry, not on yeah. Sunday, but on Thursday. You saw Thursday, it, man. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Well, he's got – so the last – just the last two games, I believe 15 targets, 13 receptions, 140 yards. Uh, it was great to see him getting in the end zone finally for his first one. But yes. 33 targets, 30 catches, like the highest catch rate in the league is – that's crazy. They need to feature him more or, or continue to feature him, I think. I think at the level we've got him at right now I think is good. Um, 8, 10, 12 targets around there. Like I said, run it through Diggs, run it through Kincaid, and then Shakir and, uh, and and Davis can continue to be kind of those auxiliary pieces, get Cook involved a little bit more in the passing game. Um, but let's get to the, the bad. And uh, for me, I, I, we kind of already mentioned it, in the second half, those two fourth downs, uh, to me, that we needed to go for at least one of those. I, yes. We're at 14. Put your foot on the gas, keep going, and you know, put the nail in the coffin in, in a sense and end that game. Right. I agree, man. You you have to put the game away when you have the ball. And we and once again, McDermott's a defensive guy, and I understand that his bread and butter is always gonna try to put it on the back of the defense. But with so many injuries, especially up the middle of our defense, I mean, our offense is the best way of at least get first down. You you don't even necessarily have to score. Even with my son, my son plays junior varsity football, okay? When you keep – when you, I tell him all the time, he plays right guard. I tell him all the time. I don't care if you score, but you got to get first down because the more your defense got to do a quick turnaround, get back on the field, they're going to be more successful with giving up plays. So at least give your defense time to rest, collect, look at the film, look at things to get, you know – be better for the yeah. next series. But if it's a quick turnaround, man, then the defense might give up a score. And look at the Josh Allen interception at the beginning. Once again, I know that was a bounce. It really wasn't his fault, whatever. But they scored. And then next thing you know, yeah. we went from just like just like this, we went from 10 nothing to 10-10. You know? And that was against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers team, who's pretty much mentally just kind of like us right now. But I'll tell you, this Sunday night in Cincinnati – Joe Burrow is looking like Joe Burrow. So we're going to yes. need those coaching things, those coaching aspects to win us games, man. So it's going to be a tough test for the Bills. Yeah, it, it definitely is. And we're definitely going to get into that a little bit later in a bit too. I do want to address really quick what Matt said. We shouldn't look at Kincaid like a traditional tight end able to replace Knox's role. Kincaid is more like Ed McCaffrey. Uh, my only – I guess issue with that is if you don't replace him with with Knox and Knox and him are on the field together still, who's coming mm. off the field? That means Shakira has to come off, right? Right, exactly. And that's what I was going to touch on too. See, when we go, we're trying to force the issue with twelve personnel. But if yeah. you look at the receivers and you got somebody like Shakira who not only had the best day of his uh, season, this was the best day of his career. So now yeah. it's like, are we really an 11 personnel team, but you just don't want to take Knox out because of that contract? Well, no, I'm not. I don't care about that. I don't care about what a guy's make. I'm talking about what I see with these two eyes on the field. Put Kincaid out there. Knox could get, you know, we can sprinkle him in. But, man, secure, boy, 
man. You know what I'm saying? He looks very good. Like he can really take that slot position to another level. And then uh and then you bring in Edwards, obviously, uh, for blocking purposes and whatnot, because that's the knock on KK. This blocking ain't there. Whatever. Yeah. This dude has is not only one of the best for the Bills, best in the NFL, like you said, as far as uh, catch ratio is concerned. Yeah. You know, I, I live here in the Boise area, so I've watched Shakir since he came to Boise State as a freshman. I've watched every single one of his games. <clears throat> so to see him have the game that he had – um, it just like melted my heart. He's two games now, 10 targets, 10 catches. And that's what this offense needs is guys in that slot or, or like, you know, it's like you were saying with Kincaid that you can count on. Like we go back to, I think it was the Patriots game, maybe the one before that, uh, the, the pass to Knox, it was kind of a short pass. Wasn't a very good pass, but Knox had to kind of lay out for, he did get both hands on it. And I can't help, but feel like Kincaid would have caught that or, or even Shakira. Right. Um, again, I, I don't want to pile on Dawson Knox, but he's just not reliable, and he seems to drop him at the most inopportune times. Yeah, I, I agree, man. You ain't telling no lies, so <laughs> I just think and, – and you're going to see it. Like, when you look at KK, just look at him this weekend. Look how we look, you know. it. I... Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, um, I was listening to, to One Bill's Live earlier this week, and they – uh, Chris Brown was talking about he just makes everything look so effortlessly and uh, like there's no struggle. He just catches it and he's upfield and it's it's you know it's fun to watch. What do you got for the uh, the ugly though? Absolutely. Um, we talked about short yarded situations out of the shotgun, right? And I understand that that's our main staple. Uh, out of the shotgun or whatever, but when Josh Allen, 6'5", 260, or whatever he is, you know, it always goes up. If he's on the center and it's fourth and two or less, he's going to get it every time. So kind of like what you said earlier, that's one of the things that I want to see. If it's short yardage situation, I want to see Allen, uh, and this is kind of good and bad, I want to see Allen push the pile forward like I know he can, right? Yeah. But but once again, uh, we touched on it earlier. This is probably one of his high output is running the ball, and he's been smart with it. Get down. Get out of bounds. Protect yourself. I don't want to see you hurdling linebackers. I don't want to see you <laughs> trying to run over strong safety. You, gotta, you just got to be smart. And McDermott talks about it. If you listen to him in the post game, he says it. You know, yeah. Um, he talks about man. Hey, J hey, Josh Allen got to be smart. He got to protect himself. We coach him up on this. He has to do it. He has said all those things continuously. So it's up to Josh to be smart. But the thing about it is, it's like a double edged sword with Josh Allen because he's a very emotional guy. When he's yeah. on the field, he's mild mannered. He's a leader, but he gets fired up, man. You know, yeah, so does. he want he wants those. I'm I'm not saying he wants the highlights because I don't think that's what he's doing, but he definitely feels like he'll lay it on the line for the Buffalo Bills, and I think that's why Bills Mafia love him so much. Do you think like you bringing that up? Do you think there's maybe too much? He's putting too much pressure on himself to get a Super Bowl for the fan base, like he's because he's talked about it many times. He's dreamt about it, and and he talks about it a lot. That that is his goal is to bring a trophy home to to Buffalo and to their fans. Sometimes I feel like he puts too much pressure on himself. Just go play, like all that will come. Just go play, do your do your thing. What do you think? I can see that, but this is what comes with the job. And I've said it yeah. on my pod plenty of times. And please listen and subscribe to the Jamie D. Big Duke Show. We come on Wednesday uh, at noon every week during the season. But we talk about this. Um, once you sign that contract, once you become, a, I believe he's number five or number six in the NFL in salary for quarterbacks, I think he's top six, whatever. Yeah. He's top 10 somewhere in there. Once you sign that, con uh, once you sign that contract, it, and it just isn't the money, right? Cause it, I'm all for capitalism and you get what you, uh, earn and he has earned it. But the drawback of that, the caveat is now we can't go and fix things that we might lose, like losing Tremaine Adams. And like if we lose whoever coming up, 
So it's up to him because he's getting the bulk of the salary cap. So to answer your question, I can understand that, but that's what he signed up for when he signed that contract. So he knows what yeah. it is. He got to bring us the Super Bowl. We're paying you like one of the top quarterbacks in the league. We're paying you like the MVP candidate you've been the last three years. So with that, like Spider-Man, I don't know if you're a Marvel's guy, but for which much is given, much is required. So, and he handles it yeah. great. I've never, yeah, that's one does. thing I can give him. That's one thing I give him, man. He wears the hat wonderfully. He's very professional. He's never lost it. He always takes time for the fans, and he appreciates what we give him. But that's the only thing on the backside. Like, he knows what it's about. He knows what he signed up for. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll get into really quick. So my the part that I want to talk about as far as the ugly portion of this was the defense. Uh, at the end of the game, we saw it with Mac Jones. They let him just roll down the field and get the touchdown. We saw it again last week with Tampa Bay. They went down, they got the touchdown, and they gave it the two-point conversion. And then they gave the ball back, and they let him get down into at least into Hail Mary range. Um, so that, to me, is kind of the ugly. Like, at points, this defense plays really well, and I understand the injuries. This is not the same defense. I get that. No. Um, is there – I don't know if there's an answer for it, though. So I almost feel like the offense has to be on point – Week after right. week, to help support that that that, that defense. Yeah, the good part of it though is the pass rush still seems pretty healthy. I think they got ten quarterback hits on, on Mayfield, and man, I'm surprised they didn't have more sacks than they did in that one because they were getting after him. But late in the game, it just kind of that seemed like it disappeared. I agree with you, and like you said, I one hundred percent agree. The second half was not that good. And once again, I think that's Maduro playing conservative. I think that's the ugly. You got to keep, like you said, you got to keep your foot on the gas um, and keep going. And you got to try to put up as many points as you can. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that Tampa Bay is a screw. They're a decent team. Like I said, that, that game could have went either way. And we saw it. But yeah. you saw what we were the first half. So give me that the second half and play a complete game. McDermott always talks about all three phases playing at the same time. Well, to be honest with you, how often does that happen? You know, so right. the offense, like you just said, the offense has to carry this team. But when you got a defensive minded head coach, he's thinking, no, I can do it. And don't get me wrong. Hey, our defenses came through for us, not even just this year, but the last couple of years under Leslie Frazier. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be mm -hmm. up to the offense to try to keep our defense off the field. So I totally agree with you. And like I said, we were one hell Mary away from being a whole nother conversation. So I agree with you. <clears throat> yeah, that was that wasn't much fun to watch. I, yeah, and uh, watching the end of the game when that ball's coming down, and you saw Godwin standing there like, "Oh crap!" <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, and it's gonna happen again. Yes, and the ball should never hit the ground. But you yeah. would, and once again, you would think we would learn from the Arizona game a couple of uh, years ago, even though that was an amazing catch by D Hop. But you have somebody has to knock the ball down. Come on, that's 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 pop water football. Everybody knows that. So to see that on the NFL yeah. level, it just makes me pull out what little hair I have, which <laughs> I have done. So it makes me pull it out, man. I'm kicking and I'm kicking pillows and I'm you know. I'm going nuts. So, well, and we saw it last year too in the Vikings game. Yeah, you know, on that yeah. fourth and eighteen, just knock the ball down. Knock it's, the ball yeah. down, bro. Knock yeah. the ball down, let's, but let's let's move forward because we do have a huge game coming up uh, this weekend, and I've kind of already said my my thoughts on it on on our show, but I'll just throw it in here really quick. I think. Obviously, it's the next game, so it's the biggest game, right? That whole mantra that the Bills go with. But to me, this is the game that's going to either propel them through the rest of the season, either in a good way or in a bad way. There's going to be so much emotion tied up in this game. I, if they lose this one, and especially if it's bad, I just don't think mentally they would be I, – I think it's going to change the trajectory of this season completely. But if they can win it, whether it's close or not, however, I don't care. Get the W. If they win that and they can come out of there with that W, I think it just like ignites the fire again. I think it boosts the morale, and this team just rolls from then on. I could be wrong. I, it won't be the first time, but I could see that vantage point. I would say 
that the Miami Dolphins game was that. You know what I'm trying to say? So I think I think what you just described was the Miami game a couple weeks ago. When we when we monkey stomped them, I think you it was kind of like, oh yeah, the Bills are here. If we lose this game, I don't think it's gonna be the Dundrum. Way I look at our schedule is beat the teams you're supposed to beat. Don't lose to the scrubs. Look the part. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, yeah. okay, we, we lost to the Jets. All right, the Jets without uh, Aaron Rodgers. That was uh, – even though the Jets got a wonderful defense. But don't lose to Zach Wilson. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Josh Allen, you got to be better than Zach Wilson, which he was. I, I mean, Zach Wilson did beat the Eagles. <laughs> he did. He did. He did. And like I said, with their defense, they're going to always be in it. But my thing is, I will put it on Josh Allen because you got to look better than him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, when I look at the box score, the, forget the game, look at the box score, you shouldn't be what what was Zach Wilson. Now, if Josh Allen would have went out there through 300 yards, three, four touchdowns, and we lost, then so be it. But you look like yeah. Zach Wilson in that game. You know what I'm saying? So then we go yeah. to London. And once again, if you listen to our show, I blame that loss on administration. We left the Thursday before a Sunday game across the pond. That's idiot versus a team that's been there for two weeks. So I knew it, and and, and I yeah. called it, listened to it. I knew it because I've been to Europe before, man. It took me days to get my body acclimated, and I'm just a fat old man. I'm not going out there <laughs> playing a game. I couldn't imagine going. To, you feel like I don't, have you ever been to Europe before? I don't know if you travel, but. Uh, I only well, I was in the army, so yeah, I deployed a few times. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> okay, so you know, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I mean, I'm an out of shape old man, but it took me days to get acclimated. Yeah. I mean, shoot, it takes me days to get out there by you, man. If I gotta go, I live in Virginia. If I gotta go to the West Coast, it takes me a couple of days to get acclimated. You know what I'm saying? So, I just. I feel like that was administration. We should have been out there beforehand. And once again, if you think I'm just being a blowhard, Sean McDermott said it in the post game. He's like, we got to reevaluate that. He was pissed off about it, you know? So that's what I do, yeah. man. I, don't, I mean, I don't really do anything. I'm a dad. I, You know, I cut my grass. I talk to the neighbors with their dogs. I don't do much. So I'm always listening to everything, the post game. I love all that stuff. Some people don't get into it. I do. So – I like when I get affirmation from my coach of things that I say. I feel good about it, like you said, right? That's right. So, Absolutely. so anyway, um, yeah. So I I put the Jacksonville loss on them, right? So it's just just beat the bad teams and be competitive with the good teams, and we'll be okay. We don't have too many bad teams left. <laughs> You're, right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, and I mean, we this is the rough part of our schedule. You're right. Yeah, we got so it's Cincinnati and then it follows up with Denver. I we can sit here and say that should be a win, but they did just beat the Chiefs, whether he had the flu or, or whatever the case may be. I mean, Michael Jordan had the flu and it didn't stop him. But I just don't <laughs> I love it. I love um, the MJ reference. I love it. I love it. But, uh, Michael <laughs> Jeffrey Jordan. <laughs> Uh, and then after that, I, I, it's what Kansas City, Philadelphia. I don't remember the exact order. Then the Chargers are in there. We got the Jets in there somewhere again. Um, again, the Jets is a team that we should beat, but for whatever reason, we struggle with them. And the, not to interrupt you, I'm sorry, but the Patriots. No, you're good. We can't. We can't lose to the Patriots. That was the third game. We can't lose to the Patriots. You can't lose to damn me. Excuse my language, but you can't lose to McCorkle Jones, bro. You can't. You can't lose to a guy named McCorkle. You know what I'm saying? So that's the thing. Now, if we would have beat the Jets, and if we would have beat uh we would have beat McCork or New England, then we'll be sitting where we want to be sitting. You know what I'm saying? And then after beating my uh Miami the way we did, we'd be great. So you gotta win the games you're supposed to win in this league. Yeah. And most of the time, Super Bowl contenders, they do. They do. Yeah, I agree totally. For this game, aside from the obvious, you know, cliche, don't turn the ball over and stuff like that, what do you think Buffalo needs to do in this game to to come out of here with a W? I think Josh Allen needs to play better than Joe Burrow. And I know you might all tell it, like, it's that simple. 
Josh Allen has to be on national. And that's the thing. We're going to be on national TV. Like, you got to give those performances. And that's the thing. He leads the league in completion percentage, his stats up there, but do it on national TV when everybody's watching. Because when we play at 1 o'clock on CBS, all right, and you beat, uh, you know, Zach Wilson or whatever or whatnot, everybody ain't watching. Do it on national TV so everybody can see it. Because that's how you get Pro Bowls. That's how you get yeah. all pros. That's how you get, you know, all these accolades, MVPs. MVPs. Let's get back in the MVP conversation. That's what we need because Joe Burrow is Joe Burrowing again, right? He started off slow, right, because he was coming off the injury. Now he's starting to get back into it. And to tell you the truth, we're three-play dogs, but I can see us winning this game. I can see us winning this game, injuries and all. So we just got – Josh Allen has to play – like the Josh Allen we know, and Sean McDermott can be conservative. Go out and try to win. Don't pace yourself. This isn't like yeah. running a mile where you run, you you pace yourself, and then you try to sprint it in at the end. <laughs> no, I want to see you sprinting the whole time. And I think we can do that. Like I said, we've seen it in spurts. You saw it last Thursday night in the first half. Yeah. So basically the analogy would be, you're not running a mile here. You're running a 400 meters. Like, don't stop. You. Go. I need you sprint. I need you sprint. Yeah. I need you sprint. And Josh Allen, let him run the football. You know, the power runs and everything else. And if the middle of the field's open, because, like, Jacksonville had a spy, but Tampa Bay didn't spy him. Then you got to make them pay. Keep do you think the that do you think that the the lack of a spot is because he's not running now and then teams and defenses are like, okay, well, if he's not going to do that, instead of spying and we're going to draw back into coverage or we're going to bring an extra blitzer or whatever they, they decide to do with him, does the last mm -hmm. game change that? Because I think he had – two weeks ago he had, I believe, it was seven carries, but only like 15 yards. Last week, seven carries, but it's 41 yards. And the point I was bringing up is that it's the timing of those runs where, where right. what made the difference. Like he, he scrambled out. I don't know how many times this season in the past we've seen him scramble out left or right, and there's grass in front of him for a first down, and he doesn't take it, I, I, it that, which I don't understand <coughs> why. And then last week he started to do that. He's like, okay, I can get some yards here. I'm just going to go get him. And he was smart about it. He got down or he got out of bounds. He didn't try to hurdle anybody. Right. Right. I think it's a situation – it feels like sometimes – I don't know if you remember Kobe Bryant early on – when people say, oh, Kobe Bryant, you're gunning and all that stuff. And he's like, oh, really? I'm gunning? Okay, well, I ain't going to shoot none. You know? And that's what it feels yeah. like he reverted to. I don't know if Josh Allen's doing that, but I'm just giving you an analogy. It's like he went from running all the time, like, okay, people don't want me to run. I ain't going to run none. Because there's been plenty of times where it was open green and he'll stop and throw the ball yeah. versus just running for the first down. So I think he was doing that despite us maybe. I don't know. That's how it feels to me when I'm watching the game and I'm into it. I'm like, why you just didn't run the ball? So <laughs> yeah. I just think he well, needs to be judicious and he needs to be smart. Well, we've heard McDermott say in some of these press conferences that they're not telling him not to run. They're just saying be smart about it. So it's almost like they kept beating it and beating him to your point. And he's like, well, I can't, I can't not run physically, so I'm just not going to run at all. And it, there's mm -hmm. got to find a balance there because I – well, I don't want him to get hurt, but when he's on those power sweeps and he's, you know, barreling down and he's got two linemen out in front of him, it's like, who's going to stop that? Nobody. Yeah. Nobody. So, Just get down and stay out of hard way. Like I said, be smart. Yeah. Um, one other thing I, as far as – I, I kind of liken this a little bit to the, the Miami game. I feel like if our offense can get, the, get out there and just score, score, score and keep the pressure on – Cincinnati. I think at some point they might make that mistake that our defense can capitalize on. And that's kind of what. And I'm with you. I think we can win this game. In fact, I know we can win this game. Am I going to sit here and predict? Pre, 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 I can't say the word. Predict a score or anything like predict that? No, score. not right now. Right. Um, right. I know my co-hosts over on Mafia Cast are going to make me pick a score, but I'm not doing that right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a game. It's going to be a game. And uh, and I know we're going to be on the edge of our seat from start to finish. And hopefully we can pull this out. I think it'd be huge if we can get this win. I think so too. But like you said, we got opportunities, man. 
You know what I'm saying? And what makes NFL so great is not college football. You can make the playoffs and have seven losses. You know what I'm saying? So it is an end-all, be-all for this week. It would be a nice feather in the cap to get a win. Obviously, I would love for us to win. But if we don't, then we got another opportunity with Kansas City. We got a big opportunity in a couple weeks, Thanksgiving weekend in Philadelphia. So we still got we still got opportunities to have statement wins. We just got to string together the ones like this is an opportunity because Cincinnati isn't Cincinnati. Kansas City, like you said, Kansas City ain't Kansas City in like they used to, they've been. They're still good, yeah. but would you be surprised if we beat them? Hell, we always no. beat Kansas City in a regular season. <laughs> So, yep. you know, would you really be surprised? So we just got to use these opportunities to, to, to you know, to uh, get some victories, start adding them up. So we're getting some score predictions here. Uh, that's not for me. 27 to I 20. Will, I'll tell you right now. I, I will never pick, pick Buffalo to lose a game. I, I won't. <laughs> Sometimes Ooh. I might predict the wrong score uh, more often than not. But I just I can't pick against this team because they are capable of beating anybody in the league at any time. That is true. That is true. But you got to do it for fun, man. That's what people. That's what they want to hear, man. And yeah. if you don't give oh, predictions, then people ain't gonna log on and listen to it. So I get it, but it really don't mean nothing. I mean, it ain't like we're in a locker room. It ain't like we're at their practices or we're dressing out. So you know, it's just us right. at the barbershop <laughs> talking trash. So. That's right. That's right. It, it, I mean, it's fun to talk, right? Yeah, it's fun. It's definitely fun. So, All right. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and get on out of here. <clears throat> uh, Big Newt, you want to go ahead and give another plug for your show really quick? Once again, I'm co-host of the Jamie D. Big Newt Show. You can find us on Buffalo Runners, Apple Podcasts, um, iTunes, and everything else. So give us a listen, man, if you want to get some laughs and talk Bills football. So Jamie D. Big Newt Show. There you go. And for me, I host the the Mafia cast. We have been on Fridays. We're moving back to Thursdays this week. So look for us Thursday night, 7 o'clock Eastern, uh, with my fellow hosts, Casey and, and Mike. And we'll we'll break down the Bengals game some more. Um, I, I'm with you. We're just three guys. We, we, you know, we like to hang out, talk bills. We're not coaches. Um, played years ago, but nowhere near <laughs> the collegiate level or professional. But we just like to talk Buffalo and talk football. So. I apologize for the regular host not being here. I know y'all are disappointing. I'm certainly not Fina at all. I'm just a lowly <laughs> D, a former D2 player. So thank you for listening to us, and hopefully you enjoyed the show today. So Yeah, we're out of here. We'll see you guys all next week, or some of you later this week as well. Go Bills. Hey, hey, hey. let's go Buffalo.